Good morning and a very warm welcome. You're watching Janata Television and this is the English Bulletin with me, Sushant Dakal. The top stories first. Dissident faction of NCP intensify protests, urges public to pour into streets for mass protest. Sister wing of NCP faction ready for mass protest, the Hal Nepal faction planning for demonstrations on January 24th. Experts concerned about volatile politics in polarized Nepal, stakeholders allege political parties of inviting more trouble during pandemic. U.S. President Donald Trump delivers his farewell speech, President-elect Biden to take office as America's 46th president. And India pull off a dramatic final day win against Australia at the GABA, win the four-match series 2-1. And now the news in detail. The Ham Nepal faction of Nepal Communist Party has decided to intensify their protest against the government's move to dissolve the parliament. Issuing a statement yesterday, the dissident leader, dissident faction of NCP urged the public to actively participate in the second phase of protest. Chairman Duo Madhav Kumar Nepal and Pushpa Kamal Dal requested people from all communities and groups to pour into the streets against the government's unconstitutional move. In the statement, NCP has termed the government's move as unconstitutional and undemocratic. It further states that the government's decision has caused a great upheaval in national politics and party organization. The Supreme Court has been conducting hearings against the government's move since Sunday. The Dahal Nepal faction has warned the implementation of the constitution will face numerous hurdles unless the Supreme Court sets a precedence by upholding the spirit of the constitution and its provisions word by word. The chairman duo also pointed out to the need of reviewing the mistakes by political party leaders. Pushpa Kamal Dahal, chairman of Nepal the Hal Nepal faction of NCP has raised objection to the language used while dissolving the lower house, saying it reflects the speech during the king's rule. Addressing a mass gathering of press organization Nepal in the valley yesterday, Chairman Dahal said that the Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli imitated the language of former kings while dissolving the House of Representatives. Speaking at the same program, senior leader Madhav Nepal stated that he has always stood in favor of press freedom. Leader Nepal also alleged Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli of attacking the country's press. The impact of split in the ruling party has now also extended to press organization of Nepal. The Hal Nepal faction of ruling Nepal Communist Party has been organizing trainings for its sister organization. The dissident faction has been preparing for mass demonstration against the dissolution of lower house. The leaders organized a training program for its women cadres yesterday in order to make the protests more effective. The Dahal Nepal faction is gearing up for a mass protest against Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's decision to dissolve the House of Representatives on 24th of January this Friday. All Nepal Women's Association had also organized a protest rally before the training. The coordinator of All Nepal Women's Association, Amrita Thapa, requested the leaders and cadres to participate in the mass demonstration. Thapa termed the dissolution of lower house as unconstitutional and undemocratic. The participants of the protest rally also criticized Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli of his latest actions. Women have also demanded for an end to gender-based violence during the mass rally. Coronavirus has claimed four more lives in the country, taking the death toll to 1,969. The government yesterday confirmed 348 new cases of coronavirus across the country. Following the latest round of tests, the total cases of coronavirus in the country have climbed to 267,992, while the number of active cases has dropped to 3,764. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 262,259 infected persons have recovered from the disease so far. 
Nepal is currently among the top 42 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. The USA tops the list with 24.8 million confirmed cases, followed by India with 10.59 million cases. Coronavirus has infected more than 96.59 million people across the world and claimed over 2.06 million lives. After the dissolution of the lower house, the House of Representatives, both the ruling and the opposition parties must act responsibly in the changed context of Nepal's polarized politics. The government has already announced the date for election, prompting the Election Commission to make preparations for the polls. Political parties have allegedly invited more problems during these troubled times when COVID-19 has taken a huge toll on the country. Experts continue to point out the obvious issues regarding the leadership's decision. Rajnitik after the government decided to dissolve the House of Representatives, the dispute between the parties has now dragged the constitutional bodies into controversy. The ruling NCP has not yet split officially, but there is a sharp division among its two factions. It is not clear what will happen. At this time, the courts and the election commission are being cautioned through streets, rallies and demonstrations. This has raised further concerns. With the announcement of election date, the Commission has started procedural and internal preparations. Experts say that instead of bickering about their personal interest, the party should consider what direction the country should take if they have to run the country tomorrow. The leadership of a political party has to be responsible towards the demands of the time and the people. Although the country has adopted democracy, many are worried that the parties have not yet become democratic. And now the news from the economic front. Tourism entrepreneurs have demanded a waiver of the electricity demand charge with the government. During the discussion held at the Finance Ministry yesterday, representatives of the tourism and hotel business urged the government to increase the time period for deposit withdrawal from two to three years by amending the business continuity loan disbursement procedure. Similarly, they have requested to change the loan repayment time period to five years instead of four to make arrangements for exemption of electricity demand fee and to make arrangements for the flow of loans up to 100% of the existing collateral. Similarly, they have also demanded to make arrangements not to make the limit mandatory if there is a need for more than the loan limit of Rs 200 million per customer. Entrepreneurs have also said that there are problems in the flow of refinancing and business continuity credit. Finance Minister Bishnu Paudal said that the government would provide necessary assistance to, the, to make the tourism sector, which was severely affected due to COVID-19, operational, stating that the government has brought relief, facilitation and incentive programs. Finance Minister Paudal said that emphasis would be laid on the effective implementation of the plans and the programs. Welcome back and now the international news. President Trump has condemned the Capitol riots in his final address to the people of the United States. In his farewell remarks, President Trump extended his well wishes to the new administration in keeping America safe and prosperous but refused to name President-elect Joe Biden during his 20 minutes long video address. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will be sworn in as President and Vice President today in the night. 
President Trump has condemned the Capitol Hill riots that occurred early this month. The official statement released by the White House has quoted Trump from his final remarks as saying, all Americans were horrified by the assault on our Capitol. Political violence is an attack on everything we cherish as Americans. It can never be tolerated. According to BBC, Trump himself has been impeached for incitement of insurrection over the attack and will face trial in the Senate after he leaves office. If convicted, he could be barred from standing for public office. Trump is the first president in the U.S. history to be impeached twice. You're watching Jonathan Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. India pulled off an astonishing run chase to inflict Australia's first defeat at the GABA, winning the match by three wickets. Needing 328 to win on the final day pitch, the injury-hit tourist got home with three overs to spare. Subham Gill made 91 to give the Indians an important start to their innings, while Rishabh Pant finished the chase with 89 not out to his name. They win the series 2-1. Keeping the Border Gavaskar series, they won in Australia two years ago. It was one of the finest Test Series wins by an away side in Australian soil, given the list of unavailable players. India also recovered from being bowled out for 36 runs, their lowest total in the Test cricket, losing the series opener by 8 wickets. India produced a stunning comeback to win the second Test by 8 wickets, then defiantly battled, batted through the final day to earn a draw in the third. However, they saved their best performance for the last game, eventually winning the series by 2-1. The Indian team will now host the English side in February at home, while the Australian side will look to bounce back against the Kiwis. We are at the end of Janata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Dissident faction of NCP intensify protest urges public to pour into streets for mass protest. Sister wing of NCP faction ready for mass protest with the Hal Nepal faction planning for demonstration on January 24th. Experts concerned about volatile politics in polarized Nepal, stakeholders allege political parties of inviting more trouble during pandemic. US President Donald Trump delivers his farewell speech, President-elect Biden to take office as America's 46th president. And India pull off a dramatic final day win against Australia at the GABA, win the four-match series 2-1. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamachar.com. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.